What's up, everybody? This is Big Game James, and I am on the Dallas Prospect, and I got a good little one-on-one today with my guy, Derek Kirby. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. Uh, doing really good. I appreciate you uh, setting aside the time to, to kind of flip the interview thing we did. Yes, you got to interview me, got to get a little bit of background, why I wanted to get into the media field, some things that, you know, I had to want to look on the horizon, but we're going to switch it up, and I like that we are going to switch it up. Excuse me, because I want you got some interesting things that I want to find out about. Um, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, sure. We've known each other a few years. It's been a great ride. You've exposed me to a lot of things, especially on the basketball tip with the Mavericks. When you what really got you into really the media field specifically, let me not even say media field. Let me say what got you into writing because you're a very powerful writer and you still are currently writing uh, currently writing right now. Uh, can you tell me the two people you write for again? I write for Dallas Sports Fanatic and Clutch Points predominantly, and of course, the Dallas Prospect as well. Okay, so what really got you into the writing? Was that a natural thing for you? Um, you know, writing in general was something I didn't really kind of find a, a passion for until I was probably 20 years old. Like, I, I always had, like, ideas, but I didn't ever really have the discipline to sit down and kind of put it together. So. Mm-hmm. It started out first with just kind of coming up with a story idea for like a, a book I wanted to work on, which has been like this long standing background project of mine. But it was one of those things that as that kind of developed and I improved in that regard, I I got more and more interested in writing in general and not just doing uh, fiction stuff, but actually getting into more of the sports realm as well. So when I moved back to Texas from Oklahoma, I was 23 and I was kind of looking for a, a different direction as far as my career path and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I went back to school and my focus was at the time I wanted to get uh, my English degree, a Bachelor of Arts in English. Mm-hmm. And the idea was I wanted to kind of try and walk the line in something that would help me in both fields, both something that I could get into kind of the sports side, uh, mm-hmm. but not a pure journalism degree, but still help me as well with like creative writing based things and that. Mm-hmm. So I, I came back and I just kind of lucked into a writing gig with a, a website. It's defunct now. It was called uh, Sports Report USA. Uh-huh. And uh, for them, I covered the Cowboys for them. And wouldn't you know it, my first season covering them was, uh, I believe it was the last eight and eight year. <laughs> so oh, that was right. a brutal Cowboys season to start with. But uh, that was that was a good experience. Never got paid uh, what my contract said I was going to. But I took it as an experience all the same. And um, that, I mean, that was, that was the first gig and that I, I knew I was interested uh, from that point on. All right. So now you you've been writing for a while. Did that really kind of spark you when you kind of were maybe writing for someone else? Maybe you didn't get the pay that you wanted. Um, did that kind of spark you to kind of want to do your own independent thing and how the Dallas prospect, maybe the idea came about. How did that idea really, the Dallas prospect really become a, a creation? Right. Uh, after I worked for Sports Report USA, I, I I was able to move right into another writing gig. This for an uh, also now defunct website, ProjectShanks.com. Mm-hmm. And that is a, a website where it was a sports and pop culture website. So that was my first uh, kind of experience with that. It allowed me to be, I was brought on to be their Mavs writer. Mm-hmm. And from there, I was also able, I was kind of given open license because you know, that was my primary thing, but I could write any sports or pop culture stuff that I wanted to. And so that kind of gave me an open forum that I could just write about whatever. And so that was actually a good experience for me because it allowed me to kind of expand my horizons in that regard. And after probably halfway through the first season uh, with them, I was able to actually start getting media credential passes, which I was surprised they were actually able to provide that. We were not a big website. I think Project Shanks was around five years. And I want to say we were probably something in the ballpark of like 16, 1700 followers. Like Mm -hmm. it it was, it was really good uh, for such a small operation with, you know, no funding or anything like that for sure. Mm -hmm. But it it was just something that we were surprisingly able to get this access. I probably over the next two, two and a half seasons went to a dozen or so games for the Mavericks. And yeah, that was, that was pregame game. Carlisle Pressers, uh, Mark Cuban, he didn't do it last night, but he used to always do these uh, media sessions where he was doing the whole Stairmaster thing. And Mm -hmm. uh, in that, you know, he's sweating like a dog and you're just kind of right there talking with the media. You could pretty much ask him whatever. 
Um, and one of my first games there, I got the, uh, it was kind of like an honorary, like F off from Mark Cuban, just recognizing mm-hmm. I was the new guy. And he jokes mm-hmm. like, Oh, you know, you haven't made it in Dallas media until Mark Cuban tells you to F off. So, you know, F off. And I was just like, Oh, cool. That was <laughs> my introduction in that. But he's like, yes, I like that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, I mean, with, uh, with prospect, that was my first introduction to that. There was actually a time then when I started running, project shanks for a while like i didn't own it Mm -hmm. i was kind of i i viewed it like i was a creative director Mm -hmm. and so i kind of i I worked with all the different contributors and kind of managed the website and that was a good experience for me as well i actually briefly looked into um taking over ownership of it like actually purchasing it from the guy who owned it because he was wanting to shut it down like he had kind of gotten to that point with it after five years i think he had pretty much done what he wanted to do with it and mm-hmm. we ended up not being able to reach an agreement. I had already been working with law actually a little bit while it was still me running Project Shanks. Mm-hmm. And then after I decided I wasn't going to buy the rights for Project Shanks from the owner, then that's when it was like, okay, let me do my own thing then. I can build up mm-hmm. my own thing. I don't have mm-hmm. to invest a bunch of money in buying the rights to basically a domain name and a base of, you know, 2000 people for brand recognition. Like I can, I can do this myself. I've run it the last six months. I have an idea of how to manage and maintain content, how to work with some of the other content creators and kind of ultimately wanting to build a network, which is still a a big goal for me. But that, that's really the basis of it is project shanks was uh, a really important stepping stone for me in that regard, both with regard to the access and uh, just the the experience in general of running the website and c- creating content. All right, all right. Now you say you do like um, web design things of that nature, correct? I yeah, mean, yeah, that's my day that job. Back? That's your day job. Now you you've been doing that. Do you when you're doing this Dallas Prospect? Are you trying to incorporate that kind of seeing the web design? Um, kind of, I know how you can. S- see with the website in general but mm-hmm. i'm saying are you trying to have like a kind of writing side that you have people with the dallas prospect and then kind of add a web design team or is that a big goal what are kind of your goals going forward with dallas prospect well i mean obviously it helped uh building out the website and everything helped the fact that i'm a web developer and i've been mm-hmm. doing that um for about 10 years now so mm-hmm. that that was something that obviously helps me build out my own website i didn't have to hire anybody to do it or do a service for it. Now I do have, and at this point, the thing is like the web development stuff, it's always just been like a skill I have. It's never been work I'm actually passionate about. It it just pays the bills for me. And with as much as I've stretched my time thin these days between the full-time job and uh, the content for prospect, all the different websites I have to write for, uh, I basically just was like, okay, I'm at a point where I don't have a whole lot of bandwidth to sit down with the code and try and make enhancements or develop new functionality or anything like that for it, for the website. Mm So uh, I reached out to a friend of mine, Jacob Taylor, who basically he's my uh, web uh, admin or whatever you want to consider at this point. Um, Mm -hmm. I'll I'll still make the post and all that. Like I'll I'll run the the adding of the content. But as far as new development and layout changes, I pretty much leave that exclusively to him. He's the only... Uh, if, if I were to have like a web development team, like you said, he would be the only person on that team right now. And, uh, that's just something where it works for him. Cause he, he's building kind of a, a freelance portfolio in that way. And so mm-hmm. it works out for him where he gets that experience. I can, uh, improve the website and I can still, um, every now and then, you know, kick him a little bit of money here and there for services rendered and all of that. So that works out pretty well, uh, in that regard, as far as the team of writers, yeah, that, that's something where we, we've not gotten to the point yet where we've taken that next step to actually be able to uh, pay our contributors yet. That That is my major, major goal. I don't even take anything from it. Um, mm-hmm. Anything that has come from Prospect has been set aside, either turned around and invested right back into the site and channel or set aside for you know helping us grow to that next phase. And so we're looking actually to add a couple different uh, ad revenue streams for the website itself here soon, which should hopefully open that door for us. Nice. Nice. Now it was also, you know, when we met, I was, I seen a lot was a lot Dallas Cowboys based with the, with the prospect. Mm -hmm. And then the Dallas Mavericks came in the fold and you said you had already did the Mavericks uh, prior to this with other, uh, you know, defunct um, uh, sites that you were writing. Yeah. That you were writing for. Yep. So that was already something that was in, in you. Um, is 
I know you're a Cowboys fan, but do you? How do you feel about that mask? Because I really seen that Mavs kind of site really, really blow up. Um, in, in the past like ten months, really going strong, very strong. You just went to a game just recently. Mm-hmm. What do you kind of? Uh, I mean, are you? Are you? Do, you, do the Cowboys always excite you, or when you really get around that Mavs, does, does that excite you? Or is it kind of just both the same as kind of both same? Uh, I mean, I, I think I have a, definitely a soft spot for basketball. I'm a huge fan of both teams. I love talking mm-hmm. Cowboys. Um, that's actually something. If if I had a a mild frustration at all with kind of the state of uh, the audience and, and it's just where the turnout is, right? It's mm-hmm. a very saturated market for Cowboys talk. Right, so even right. though I've been talking Cowboys on the channel since it started, uh, a lot of the early content, as you pointed out, was more Cowboys focused because a lot of my sports writing was Mavericks focused. That was almost mm-hmm. the balance I struck for a while. Mm-hmm. And I, I love um, talking about both teams, but yeah, basketball definitely has a soft spot for me. And, you know, it, it was just one of those things that was kind of a the Mavericks had been kind of lost out at sea, so to speak, in terms of where the team was headed. Right. And I had done videos here and there for the Mavericks and they hadn't really driven any kind of views or anything. And so mm-hmm. I was like, all right, well, if my time is limited, I need to focus where where that attention and energy is. And so that led to a little bit more Cowboys content for a while. And right. then with uh, the lead up to the the draft, the Luka Doncic draft, there was a big turn in the audience. And suddenly it was like it went from, you know, the Mavericks videos getting 60, 70 views to being a couple thousand views. Or in some cases it was pushing 8, 10, 12,000. I mean, it just depended. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. It, it was it was huge. I mean, I, I think a lot of that, obviously, you draft a, a European superstar and that's going to bring mm-hmm. in a whole new audience. I think, mm-hmm. I think uh, outside of the U S our, our analytics show that Germany and Slovenia are our two biggest uh, viewership slices <laughs> outs, outside of the U S and they're actually a lot closer in overall percentage than mm-hmm. I would have thought if you had just said that ahead of time. So yeah. I, I think that's just it. It brought in a whole new audience. Um, you know, our, our, our followers and everything overseas and, then the fact that the team has been able to be exciting again and good, the Porzingis mm-hmm. trade only furthered that, you know? So it just kind of led to a perfect storm where suddenly now, if, if I had to guess, the subscriber base is probably close to three to one Mavericks to Cowboy fans at this point. Like the audience has flipped that dramatically. And, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with it. Whatever people are, whatever people are wanting to see, you know, their viewership is kind of what dictates the the main focus, you know, the primary focus. And the Mavs fans have been very, very high energy and very involved. The last couple of videos have been uh, hundreds of comments and thousands of views and all of that. Like it's been an outpouring of largely positive energy. Yeah, I know. I've actually did a, a couple of Mavs shows recently, did the one Mavs show with you. And I, I really love the, the interjections from the people that were in. Yeah. Um, not just viewing, but the comments that were given a very a lot of smart um, basketball IQ people in there. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it, it really is good when you have people not only just watch the show. Uh, but have a good basketball IQ. It makes it better when you are talking about a sport. When you hear people having a good basketball IQ, it makes it give the good energy back and forth. And that's what I really like about what you brought to the table on that Maverick side, uh, because it's a lot of good energy, a lot of good mental, what they say, mental food, brain food, something like that. Yeah. It's a lot of good stuff that goes on with that. And as you said before, I mean, I, I kind of do strictly Cowboys on my end. And, uh, you know, I like doing other things. And just like you said, it's it's saturated because it's like everybody and their mama's doing Cowboys. You know, even if you go live at the end of the game, there's 35,000 other people going live. You know what I mean? So it is crazy. Uh, But what you definitely brought to the table with this Dallas prospect has been really, really amazing. And I can definitely see you recently just hit over 3K. Is that correct with your YouTube channel? Yeah, uh, I think it's right now like 3250. YouTube changed it up where it's really hard to actually see your like down to the single digit subscriber count. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I it's I think 3250 and it's somewhere in that span between 50 and 60. So it yeah, it's it's grown by another 350, 360 or so since the season started. Well, that's really good. Um so you know, I wanted to ask you a few more things before we get off here. Yeah. Now, you since you you since you built a prospect, actually, when when exactly is the date that you actually started prospect? 
Um, it, it it's a. Can I throw a loop on you? No, no. <laughs> uh, I, I basically lump in prospect with kind of my own DBA, uh, which mm-hmm. is called Kirby Creative, and right. that's just kind of the vehicle for all my projects, whether they're the creative stuff, whether it's the um, you know, the screenplay stuff, the novels, or um, even obviously prospect, mm-hmm. and that was August eighteenth. 2017 mm-hmm. so I, I basically consider that the the main starting point for prospect but i the reason i was a little bit unsure initially of what answer to give is because for the first few months it existed really until january 5th or so of the following year 2018 uh i i was just kind of i wasn't really putting the stuff out there for it i was like kind of quietly developing the website and you know you can't launch a website with like two articles on it so i was basically right, right. quietly putting together all this content. I didn't really have contributors. I was just trying to throw everything I could together so that when I did start to say, Hey people look at this website, there Mm -hmm. would be, you know, 20, 30 pieces of content there at least. So that that's why there was hesitation there initially. Right. Definitely. So 2019, it looks like you've been a little little over two years with prospect and you've Mm -hmm. seen the growth uh, in this period of time. What are the goals that you have in mind for Prospect from here and beyond? And where do you see Prospect in the next, let's say, five years? Whew. Uh, five years is is a really cool thought just because, as, like you said, it's only been a couple so far. So anytime you're you're looking down the road and it's further than you've already gone, it, it feels like an eternity away. But uh, I, I think that as, as far as the goals, it, it's just to keep building the thing up. I think we've got a really good community on here. And I'd like to keep growing that. I would like, obviously, for the Mavs fan base to keep growing. I'd like to be able to get um, get a little bit p- bigger piece of the Cowboys uh, viewership uh, mm-hmm. pie, as we talk about with uh, mm-hmm. with all the Cowboy analogies and all that. As far as salary cap, we always talk about this uh, piece of pie and all that. Oh, what size right, are we going to get? Right. I'd like to be right. able to make a little bit more headway there. But I also, and this is a personal goal of mine, I would like to actually be able to strike a better balance with some of these other teams as well. Uh, I've mm-hmm. dabbled in the past in other content as well, like uh, college football talk. Uh, I was mm-hmm. doing like a Big 12 thing. Um, that was something that fell by the wayside this year, and that was in parts, like I talked about, when uh, the viewership kind of has to justify the time spent right. on it. And right. when, when the viewership's not there and you're super pressed for time, you're going to have mm-hmm. to make some tough decisions. I'd yeah, like to get back right. back to that. Uh, I'd like to give a shot to like the Dallas Stars as well, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, you know I've done wrestling content too. Um, okay, but any baseball? Uh, baseball is not super like it's not really my strong suit. I'm open to it, but I, I right. can't pre- I can't pretend to come on here and say like I can tell you exactly what's wrong with the Rangers. You know what I mean? Right, like, right, right. Yeah, I feel you. I, I I couldn't personally touch a sport that I'm not. I mean, I could read on it and tell you about it, but one yes. thing, I feel like people call you out on that, and I just don't want to have to deal with it. I want to know what the heck I'm talking about because I want to watch it, and that's just something I wouldn't touch. So I don't want to go out there and say, oh, that's a three-run home run. Man, I'm, don't, I'm, I don't know. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, I agree 100%. And that, that's the biggest thing, and I've talked with you and Law about this in the past. I think it's part of uh, why why we've actually been able to kind of draw in a viewership for our individual channels is – we don't we don't have like an agenda when we talk about stuff like we don't uh twist things or give dishonest answers or anything like that like it's genuine it's honest and it's true uh Mm -hmm. for what we think and what we actually say so even if you disagree with us that's cool but at the least you know from watching us that we honestly fully believe what we say and that we have reason for believing that like we we're not that's something you just don't get when you're watching like ESPN or Fox sports mm-hmm. or anything like that. And mm-hmm. I, I think that authenticity is very, very uh, important as far as being able to connect with an audience. So that's something that we're able to do. And um, it, it's definitely helped out a lot in that regard. Um, let's see. We're, have we touched on the the newer sports writing stuff? I know we mentioned the, the other two sites, but um, I didn't know if we actually got into, into that on, you know, writing, starting to write for Dallas Sports Fanatic and Clutch Points. Uh, well, you already talked about it. Let's bring it up because, like you said, you just had – was it Clutch Points is the ones that gave you the media pass? Was that Clutch Points? No, that was Dallas oh, Sports Fanatic. That was um, Dallas Sports Fanatic. So yeah. you started with them first and just Clutch Points just kind of – you 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 kind of uh, went out for that job, correct? And they, yeah. they hit you up and said, hey, let's let's make this happen? 
Pr- pretty much, yeah. And it was really the same for both. Um, you know, the re- the reason we're doing this interview and stuff is I actually have had um, probably a do- dozen or so people either comment or message me asking questions recently about kind of uh, my start and everything that kind of led to this point. And mm-hmm. it- it's a weird thing for me to talk about myself <laughs> in that regard. Like, it-, it is a little bit of a trip. But uh, I-, I wanted to kind of give good information on that. And so that that's part of why we're doing this video and everything. So, um, yeah, the main thing is on the, on the sports writing front, I knew that that was really an area that I could stand out and kind of stand on my own a little bit. Uh, as we mm-hmm. talked about kind of the saturated market and all that, uh, I went to, I found out about Dallas sports fanatic, formerly called Mavs, uh, Mavs fanatic. And I saw a bunch of their stuff popping up on bleacher report and, I was reading through it, you know, and I was like, you know, this is pretty good, but I think I'm just as good, you know, right, like, I think right. I can do this. Mm-hmm. And uh, I happened to find someone on my friends list that uh, actually writes for them as well. And so I was like, hey, uh, can you get me in touch with, you know, whoever runs the website and let me let me talk to them and see see about, you know, picking up as a Cowboys writer. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, I was able to get uh, get going on that and. What, what I'm thankful for in that arrangement is I've kind of been allowed to, I don't, I don't know if they have any kind of policy or anything around it, but I've been able to continue running Dallas, uh, prospect. In addition to that, it's not like I just became solely, uh, tied to them. Like I'm able to kind of do both. And so it's almost more like a, a working partnership, if you will. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that, that allowed me to start writing a bunch of Cowboys articles. Those got a immediate pipeline then to Bleacher Report. So that's a huge audience uh, outreach in that regard that I simply didn't have before. And so, and you've had quite a few, you've had like what, two or three articles more, maybe more uh, on the Bleacher Report. Oh dude, you? I, I've had more than a dozen. Yeah. That, um, that's, uh, I apologize. I oh no, it's, it's cool. Um, but uh, that's, that's big because I, I mean, I know I've always been an avid a reader of the Bleacher Report, even um, before like electronics and, and the internet and things that came out, Bleacher Report was always around. And I used to always, the Bleacher Report would always have um, the breakdowns from each team. Like yeah. they would, you know, they would go through each team and, you know, the the starters, the backups, they would go through lineups, you know, matchups. I would love the Bleacher Report because they always did matchups. Yep. And and Bleacher Report, and especially with the Cowboys, you know, they, they were real specific. So the Bleach Report has always been one of those kind of like reputable um, sites to really, you know, you, the Bleach Report says I kind of always believed it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So for you to go out there and boom, and you've been having them popping this year, uh, Mavs and Cowboys, you've been having yep. them popping. So it's really been good to see. Um, and, uh, you know, I didn't want to cut you off, but I was just kind of like, yeah, that, that Bleach Report have been really good. And it's not been like, one article here and then the next five months later, the articles have been really kind of popping as far as, and they've been going back and forth with the Maz and the Cowboys. Yeah. Um, so does, uh, so do you think when you were doing the fanatics that um, you said you kind of went after the clutch points or did the clutch points kind of see that and say, Hey, we kind of reach out to you. Uh, I, I sought out clutch points as well. It was another case of that. So I, I was writing cowboy stuff for fanatic and I was getting a bunch of it picked up by Bleacher Report, and I kind of threw out to them uh, at some point. I'm like, "Hey, you like my stuff? Uh, would I, you know, would it be all right if I also covered the Mavericks?" And you know, I, I pointed them to Prospect and showing I was already kind of doing that, and so that opened that door as well. And so by the time by the time I happened to stumble across uh, the fact that Clutch Points was looking to add editorial writers, mm-hmm. I had a I had a good uh, kind of portfolio, if you will that I was able to like link all these different articles and stuff uh, showing them, Hey, here's all my stuff that I've written. That's been picked up by bleacher report. And even then, um, you know, they were interested, but I, I had to write a brand new sample piece. So basically they gave me a, uh, a topic. Um, the only, the only say I got in that obviously is since I want to be the Cowboys writer is uh, they made it a Cowboys one. And it, it was kind of interesting because they asked me uh, my, my opinion on a, on a, topic so it was basically whether or not you pay Dak Mm -hmm. and they they let me write on that which was great but the angle that I I think this was part of the challenge too the angle they wanted me to take wasn't completely in line with my thing so it was almost like a debate sort of thing where Mm -hmm. it's like you might not 100% support the thing but you have to still present the the evidence for it 
And mm-hmm. so I, I wrote it up. Um, I think it was probably like 975 words and uh, submitted it, submitted it to them, got reviewed. And yeah, they, they liked it and they added me onto the team. I've been writing three months, I guess, for them at this point. Mm-hmm. And wh- the reason that's a, that's a big one is that that's the first time where I feel like I can actually say like, oh, okay, I'm a professional paid writer at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there are other ones that it, it's experience or it's um, access and that's, that's all great. There, there's, especially when you're trying to kind of cut your teeth early on and get your foot in the door, you mm-hmm. have to be willing to do that. And mm-hmm. so this was, this felt like a big step, like, okay, now it's the first one where I've been, uh, you know, paid for my work. And so at this point it, it kind of makes it easier moving forward to take those next steps to then kind of ease into the career path for it. Like that's, that's the main thing I want to do. I, I don't, the web development stuff that's always just been a paycheck to me and mm-hmm. you know it, it's it's made a lot of things possible for me obviously like it's it's had me comfortable enough that i've been able to invest all this time and effort and money into prospect that i have and i want to get to a point where i can transition career wise into that and i think that it's i, I can see the path now like before Man. i it felt like uh you know, it felt like a hope that was out there that I was just like, ah, I don't know if it'll work out, but I'm really hoping it does. And now mm-hmm. I feel like I can actually see that path. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy or anything like that, but I can see it. And so it's easier to believe it and to stay motivated, even on the days where it feels like a lot of stuff's not working out. Right. Definitely. Well, let me ask you this one last thing. We've been talking about the the writings that you're doing currently, yeah. starting up uh, Dallas Prospect. Mm-hmm. So, people that are listening to this right now, maybe possibly might might be an aspiring writer mm-hmm. uh, and thinking about wanting to get into that field. Mm-hmm. How would some? What would be your advice to someone who's trying to actually get into the field, whether it's trying to be writing for a, um, a publication, uh, for for you know. A, big you know company corporation yeah or if they start to do their own thing what would your be your what would your advice be and what would kind of be the steps that you would kind of do uh and to let somebody know how would they get into this field yeah uh i i would say you got to make your platform first so you have to whether you're talking about making a a channel like youtube or um a website like i did with prospect the site came before the channel um Mm -hmm. You, you got to make a platform and then you got to just throw a ton of content at it. Like you have to, it's kind of like a, uh, if you build it, they will come sort of thing. Mm-hmm. You have to, now it has to be good content. You can't just throw crap at the wall and, you know, hope that it eventually builds up. But as we talked about earlier, I've been doing prospect for two years and it, it, I was able to look at my analytics. It more than doubled in the past year. So it, it's gone. It's come a long way. And it, it just came from a lot of work and a lot of effort. You just make your platform, put in a bunch of time. Uh, I was able to reach out to guys like you and Law and kind of, you know, do these guest podcast things, do these collaborations. And that opened a lot of doors as well. A lot of, a lot of fresh eyes were able to hear, you know, hear my opinion on stuff and see all of that, find my channel. And it, it's kind of just a combination of that. It, it's that work and you just keep at it and you're going to have to basically work early on. Like I said, I, I've written, I, I've been writing a lot of sports stuff uh, basically since I was 23 and the past two years, I've been pretty, pretty relentless on that front. And even still, it's only been three months now with clutch points that it's been a, an actual paid thing Mm -hmm. so you gotta you gotta build up that portfolio if you will and you have to understand hey sometimes i'm just doing this and it's just for the experience other times uh you'll get a degree of access like the like i was able to get with dallas sports fanatic um Mm -hmm. able to go back in there now they have they've got a great operation in that they've got like a team of people that go to the mavs game so Mm -hmm. there i was there with like two other guys from the website as well so it kind of made it easy to um you know, get around and all that. Now I'd been there before, as I mentioned, but it just makes it easier in that way to kind of navigate through it. Cause it had been a few years since I'd been there. So like the entire locker room set up a change, like the layout of the thing had changed. So even just getting around was kind of like, Oh, okay, where am I now? Um, but it's just that you, you have to find something where it's mutually beneficial, right? Somebody needs content and they can only offer the, the, uh, the exposure. Somebody needs content and they can offer you the access 
uh, in return. And then you work your way up to a point where that works out. Now for me, I'm still not even content with where it's at now. I'm actually going, I, I'm so dedicated at this point to getting it. I feel right. Like making sure that I can take that leap into doing this as a profession that I'm actually, uh, going back in January to finish my master's degree in journalism. Mm. Uh, I'm going to be at UNT for that. Um, right mm-hmm. here in Denton. So that makes it easy for me or easier as it can be at least. And yeah, I'm going to be getting my master's degree in um, digital media and publication journalism with uh, a certificate in sports journalism specifically. So I'm going to balance that. Now uh, it's going to be a lot of, a lot of work on that, but you know, it's one of those things that I'm in a good enough position that I, it is doable and I feel like, yeah, that can, that can open a lot of doors the rest away from me. Cause even with all the work I've put in up until now, it's, it's all, it's all the work, um, in a almost, I think the way it's viewed is almost like a more hobby kind of sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, people view it in that way. Like if I, if I wanted to go apply to a job, like let's say I wanted to get something with Dallas morning news, they would look at my resume and they would say, well, hey, that's great, but you you come across as like an amateur or someone that has a hobby. Like your writing's your writing is solid enough, but you don't have the work history that kind of validates you. I guess is how a lot of people would view it. And you can mm-hmm. say, hey, that that doesn't, um, you know, that's not a valid reason uh, to write someone off or whatever. But I don't want I don't want to make sure that I'm not overlooked. I want to be so good that they can't ignore me. And so going this route, that opens that door. You don't have to go that route. You can build up and do everything the way that, you know, you and I have done everything at this point. Of course, you went to media school, as we talked about. So, mm-hmm. I mean, there, there's all kinds of things you can do in that regard to open doors. But I would just say for starting out, yeah, make yourself um, a platform, be it the website, a channel, whatever, and post a bunch of content, put a lot of hard work in and understand that it's a, it's a building process. Definitely, definitely. And uh, we want to see a lot more of Mr. DDP, Dallas Prospect. And before we get off here, what made you go with DDP? Yeah, that actually came about in a back when you, Law, G, and I were doing a show. Uh, mm-hmm. Basically, it was pretty, pretty straightforward. Everyone on the show had a, a nickname and everything. And I was just kind of over here as Derek. So I felt a little left <laughs> out. Uh, I was like, Big Game James, Law Nation, Producer G, and Derek. And <laughs> so I was just like, yeah, we got to find something for me here. And, um, you know, there there were ideas thrown out. And I think in the conversation, it was all just a text conversation the four of us were having. And uh, it, we had, for whatever reason, just been talking maybe half an hour earlier about, like, 90s wrestling. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I think WCW specifically. And one of my favorite wrestlers growing up was Diamond Dallas Page. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, hey, Diamond Dallas Prospect. I don't have to change anything. And right. I don't ever call myself Diamond Dallas Prospect, but that was right, right. that was where DDP came from. And admittedly, for the first few months, even with that nickname, it felt super weird. Like, mm-hmm. I wasn't used to going by it. And even when I would, like, say my nickname or something, like, in, at the start of a show, I would so still weird. kind of... I'd feel awkward. Yeah. I'm like, I feel like such a tool right now, but (laughs) it's gotten to a point now where it's like ingrained in me and like, I'll do, I'll make a mistake in like real life or something like that. I'll, I'll make some kind of mistake and I'll be like, get it together, DDP. And I'm like, "Ah." like, I feel like even more of a tool now for just referring to myself in the third person by my nickname. (laughs) It's, it's, it's you now. It's, it's who you are. It is at least (laughs) until the real diamond Dallas page becomes aware of it and gives me a cease and desist. Is exactly. That's the same way. I mean, there's a lot of big game James out there. There's like a billion of them, but there's really that James worthy. He's the yeah. big game James for real. Yep. So I ever told myself, you know, because I was saying this about myself when I was young, calling myself big game. But um, I always told myself, if I ever get famous, he's going to come hollering at me like, OK, come come see me, dog, because, uh, you know, everybody know I'm big game James worthy. Yeah. Come see me with some of that bread. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, it, it's been a lot of fun doing all of this, and it, it's something that, obviously, you asked earlier. I don't think I ever gave an answer. Five years from now, um, you know, we we've been talking about it, and I don't want to give all the details away. You you know them a fair bit because mm-hmm, we've had a lot mm-hmm, of conversations. Mm-hmm, yeah. uh, I'm still fully dedicated to the idea of our independent network that we want to build. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. 
That is, I, I have a business plan and everything in place. I've been talking with investors and uh, I'm getting everything lined up. I am working pretty much every week, most days of the week, trying to get that in order. I don't have an, an immediate timeline on that, but mm -hmm. just know that that is going to be something that uh, when it happens, it will do what I've been saying is my goal for a long time. I believe, honestly, it will change the game as far as what we do. Well, that's all we're waiting for. And uh, I think it's going to be on the rise. And I, and I definitely have full confidence in it as well. As we have talked about in our private conversations, just grinding and making things happen. And, you know, when you got things going on behind the scenes, next thing you know, they sprout up and come life. So yep. definitely excited to see what Dallas Prospect is going to be doing from here in 2019 and beyond. Thank you for your time, DDP. Although yep. this is your channel, still thank you for your time for the interview that you actually gave me. We did reverse roles. And yep. now we got to find out about DDP, Dallas Prospect, Derek Kirby, and what he's really doing uh, with the Dallas Prospect. And make sure you check out uh, Clutch Points and Dallas Fanatics. Uh, is it Dallas Fanatics, right? Dallas Sports Fanatic. That Dallas Sports Fanatics. Make sure you check out his writings. They are clutch. Hmm. As you see, he's on there. They are very clutch. Cowboys and Mavericks, and you're going to get to see another article coming because we just played them lines and we play like, eh, eh. Yeah. So I'm sure you got another one. I've, I've got some up. opinions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. So make sure y'all check out that next article that DDP has coming out on Dallas Sports Fanatics. And uh, this is our time. Uh, make sure you check out the page, his YouTube page, Facebook, Dallas Prospect on YouTube, Dallas Prospect on um, Facebook and you and the website, right? You have the yep. website as well. Yep, the um, Dallas the Dallas Prospect Prospect com. Com. So there's many outlets that you can check him out and also has a Twitter page as well. So a lot of different outlets that you can check him out on and make sure you read those writings. And if you're thinking of being, being an aspiring writer and trying to figure out the game and trying to know how you can get your foot in the game, this is a man to talk to. He's personally let me and open doors for me and myself to be able to write. I've always thought I was a writer, um, but I still felt like I had to, you know, learn some things behind the scenes and he allowed to give me a platform for myself to be able to do writings and still have some confidence and continue to grow. So he's definitely opened the door for me, folks, as far as me able to write for the Dallas Prospect. And I had some really good articles that I was able to release um, with the Prospect. So if you're thinking about making something happen, this is a guy you want to know. So check him out. Yeah. Derek Kirby, DDP, the Dallas Prospect. We'll Absolutely. talk to you soon. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Peace.